Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a dragon's head. We'll be using a sculpting workflow and I'm using a graphics tablet for this and that will certainly help you. Find out more about those in the description. This will be more for the beginner slash intermediate students out there. I won't be talking about all the basic controls but I do go into detail with the more complex things and the sculpting workflow. Do check out the links in the description and my website and the playlists on my channel for more free courses. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay, so I start off in the sculpting workspace and I select the snake hook tool and I'm changing the dyne topo to constant detail and putting it to 20. Then I'm just sort of pulling the shape around. I find constant detail easier for beginners to understand as it gives a constant detail on your brush. So you're always gonna be at 20 or 30 or whatever you set it at. Relative detail, if you zoom in, it will change the amount of detail your brush gives. And by detail, I mean the polygon count. So just getting the very basic shape, that's the most important thing. Don't rush going into the details. Make sure you get that basic shape right and that you're fairly happy with it. You can make minor changes as you go along, but generally speaking, we're trying to flesh out the shape, block it out, as they say, so we don't have to make any drastic changes once we've added any fine detail. It gets really awkward to do that later on, so make sure you get the shape right now. These sort of horn bits look like details, but they are still the basic shape at the moment. But having said that, make sure you are happy with the head shape before you move on to the horns. And you can see now I'm just fleshing out the actual features now, so the eyebrow ridge and some of those sort of nostril areas and things. All the time making sure I'm zooming around my object, making sure the shape is working from every single angle. Now I change across to the draw brush and start adding in sort of bones and protrusions and obviously digging in by holding down control to make the brush become its reverse. And that's the same for all brushes, hold down control to do the kind of reverse. So, so with the draw brush, that's the dig in. And now you can see I go over to the crease brush and that's when I start adding a bit more detail as if I'm drawing a sketch at this point. So when you're sketching, you are sort of sketching in the details and the shading and you're doing the same with the crease brush in this case. Remember you can hold down control with this brush as well to create a sort of sharp point that sticks out. I'm also going around the horns to give them some sort of separation from the head. The crease brush also helps to make any sort of protrusions deeper if you go around them and next to them. So I've created sort of ridges along the nose and ridges across the base as well. And you can see it sort of adds a bit of character and a bit of shape and form to the dragon's head. I am kind of making this up a bit as I go along. I've got reference images off the screen, but just having some fun experimenting with different shapes and form. Now here I go across the layout mode so I can add some eyes. So I add a UV sphere, make sure it's out to the side, and then I use the mirror modifier to mirror it across the other side. I also make sure that the top of the sphere where the UVs kind of match and meet in a pole, I like to make sure that that's the pupil and iris and then it looks like an eyeball and I can kind of see which direction the character's looking in. Make sure you click on the dragon before you go back into sculpt mode, otherwise you'll be sculpting the eyeball and you'll get confused. Do make sure that you're happy with the size of the eye and go back into object mode to scale it and move it if you need to. I prefer to do that in layout mode, like I say. So I've upped my resolution in the Dyne Topo settings to 50 now, so I can do a bit more detail. And you can see I just sort of sculpt on the eyelid like this. So it's nice and simple, nothing complicated. Always smoothing out, but I'm using the draw brush and then smoothing out, draw brush, smooth out, holding down shift to smooth, obviously. I thought I'd give it a more of a aggressive expression by pointing the eyebrows down as if it's frowning and then doing the bottom eyelid here. Again, just draw in, smooth out, and you get a reasonably okay looking eyelid. Here I'm fleshing out some parts where some teeth might go. So I'm thinking there'll be teeth on the bottom and teeth on the top coming down and overlapping his lips. So I've created some areas for those. Just having a good look around, making sure I'm happy with the shape still before I go into any more detail. So here I've gone back to the snake hook tool just to make sure that I'm happy with the shape before going into that finer detail. Still
still doing a bit of experimenting, but not too much movement or drastic movement of big areas. So moving around these small areas I think is okay because I haven't actually added any detail to them. Every time I move them though, I've got my Dyn Topo set to 50 on constant detail, so it is upping the resolution of these objects and adding that bit of detail. So you have to be a bit careful if you smooth out and one part's got your new resolution, one part's got your old resolution, because you'll get sort of lumpiness. You can do a constant detail fill, but I didn't see the necessity of doing that. I'm quite comfortable with the way it's going at the moment. So adding in some lips, making sure they protrude enough. And there's areas for some teeth to go. And this is just with the draw brush, digging in where necessary. Back to layout mode now. Making sure my eyes are mirrored by using the mirror object as the dragon's head, which is called quad sphere at the moment because I haven't labeled it. And now I'm adding in another icosphere here, upping the resolution, not that that makes that much difference, and then scaling it down and then just sculpt it into a tooth shape. So this is a separate object. In the new version of Blender, apparently it's going to be the button D to switch between objects. But it didn't make too much difference for me. Most of the sculpting was going to take place on the dragon's head and I did some very basic teeth really. That's something I probably ought to go back to and tidy up a bit, maybe later on. So the current way of switching between objects is to go up to edit and lock object modes, make sure that's unticked and then alt middle click to switch between your objects. But in the new version of Blender, the experimental builds this is, you just have to press D, which I think is a really good addition. So really basic tooth shape there, and it's digging into the chin and things. I'm not really too fussed, I could sort that out later. But it's kind of more about what looks good at the moment. And if you were to 3D print it, you would want it to overlap and you would want to join the objects together afterwards. So I'm just duplicating that one tooth and moving around a place. And again, I do this in layout mode, I find it much easier. And I've added the mirror modifier so that when I duplicate the teeth, it will have a mirror to the other side for each of them. I suppose I should point out that most of this video is at 200%, so it's two times speed. Uh, this teeth organizing bit I've put to 400 because it's a bit dull, just sort of moving these around. But you get the idea of the speed that I'm going at. I think the whole sculpt took about 40 to 45 minutes. At the end of all this organizing, I do go around my shape quite a lot, making sure that I'm happy with the position of the teeth and just check the other side as well to make sure nothing's off in terms of the mirror. You can always re-mirror your object under the remesh tools. So back to the draw brush at this point, making sure that I'm happy with the sort of skull and the shape of the face. Adding a few more details to the shape, I thought it lacked a little bit of character, so I thought I'd put a few more dents in and maybe this sort of some strange ear canal here and the skull goes around the edge there, just gives it a bit more character. And I decided to use the flattened brush, it's just a basic brush for sort of flattening off the edges, and I thought that helped to give it a bit more sharpness rather than roundness, so the flattened brush. You can also use the scrape brush as well, there's lots of great settings there, but the flattened brush with its basic settings just sort of brings the whole sculpt level. Now I'm going across to the clay strips tool, Again, that's to add more sort of bulk to it. Rather than the draw tool, which gives sort of roundedness, the clay strips will give it that sort of structure and form. So it's a better option than the round brush if you want sort of more pointy features. Now here I'd made a mistake. I realized that I turned the mirror off for the teeth. So I've had to go in and do a sort of remesh and re-mirror. That's under the mirror tools. I did say earlier that it was under the remesh tools, but it's actually under the mirror tools. So don't panic if you turned mirror off and you still want mirror on. You can go to the symmetry tools and the drop down menu there and there's mirror options there. So here I'm just making sure my teeth kind of fit in with the lips. So pulling out and digging in where necessary and giving some sort of gum slash lips areas. Being fairly rough really. And then just zooming out every now and again making sure it's working and it seems to be okay. Using the clay strips tool where necessary to add a bit of bulk, but also that structure that the draw tool doesn't give. So rather than the roundness, it's got a sort of squared style to it. Still smoothing out regularly whilst doing that, but that structure seems to help with that sort of more pointiness of the dragon's head. 
Again, back to the clay strips tool here to give it that sort of bone-like structure across the face. If necessary, you go into the crease tool and you can crease those edges up, make it look a bit sharper and more detailed. Here you can see I'm using that reverse crease option, so holding down control whilst using the crease brush. Not really sure what this bit is, it's just sort of maybe an ear canal or something, um, but I just thought it added that bit of interest and intrigue to the general shape of the head. Okay, so I've moved up to 500% now, just because I'm adding in general details and experimenting around with shape and form using the same brushes that I've already used. So nothing different or special here. Separating the head out very slightly to give it a bit more shape and structure. But like I say, nothing too major going on here, just adding a few details, sharpening things up and smoothing things out. I could have done a detailed flood fill that might have helped when smoothing things out but most of the mesh seems to have that resolution anyway, the resolution of 50 that I set in the first place. Now I'm just messing around with some of the horns, making sure they're nice and smooth in a sense of their shape and they haven't got any sort of lumpy bits on them and editing the chin slightly because I didn't want to give them a huge underbite that can look a bit cartoony. So just making sure I was happy with all the shape. Okay, so I'm back to real time now. So this is normal speed and I've decided that I'm going to remesh it with quite a low voxel size. And this is to make it ready so I can add the texture detail onto it. So what I'm going to use is alpha brushes so I can just simply paint on scales and bumps and things like that. It makes things much easier to add those fine details. There's a bit of a pause when I press the remesh button. It does struggle a little bit to do the remesh initially. And it might be the case if you've got a slow computer that you'll have to just leave the sculpt there because this actually takes quite a lot of computer processing power just to remesh it. And then if you're working on top of that, it can take even more. I decided to show the statistics there as well, just for my benefit actually. That way I could see how far I was going with the remesh and whether my computer was going to be happy hacking that sort of level of detail. It seems to have kept its detail okay, so I'm happy with that. So remember, you have to turn Dyntopo off before you can remesh, and I won't be using Dyntopo anymore from now on. And now I'm adding a multi-resolution modifier. I do go into this in much more detail in how to use alpha brushes and stencils for sculpting, so make sure you check that video out if you need to. What the multi-resolution modifier does is, like the subdivision surface modifier, it adds topology. But it's really great because you can sculpt on the higher levels and you can actually go back to the lower levels if you want to do any big shape and movement. The more important reason why I'm using this is that it works really well with stencil brushes and it's very good on performance. So for this I'll use my draw brush and I'm going to create a new brush and I call this texture draw. It's just easier having two different brushes in case you want to go to the stencils or back to the draw brush. Once I've done this I can go down to the texture area and click new. I also change from tiled to random that way my brush doesn't tile all over the place. There's one other setting that I find is very helpful and that's under the brush or stroke settings and change it to anchored. It's a different way of brushing but it's much easier. Then I have to go across to the texture slot here to add in my new texture. Under the texture settings I can open up one of my alphas. I just show them on the side here by turning on thumbnails. I've got these different alphas that I've picked for the dragon. Check out my video on lists of sites with great alpha textures if you want to be able to get some of these. And then because I've got anchored on, I can click and drag and it sort of brings out these shapes. So that's the anchored option under the stroke method. Now it's really nice and easy just to go around having fun adding in these different textures. There seems to be a slight glitch at the moment, which is an undo glitch when I do this. It's absolutely fine, it just takes a while to undo. Now initially I didn't change my brush strength, so it's about 0.5 at the moment, but generally speaking I like to have it at 0.2, but I actually forgot to do that at this point. So I think I'll go back in a little bit later, undo some of these and change the brush strength. So it's just something to be aware of. Your resolution will also make a difference with this. So your remesh level or even your multi-resolution level. And with the multi-resolution, you can subdivide several times. Now, if you want to add a new texture, you need to just add a new texture in your brush settings and then go to the texture slots and find another alpha. So add a new texture in the brush first and then go to the textures to add the new image. And then you can click and drag and pull them out. Again, I've probably got the strength a little bit too high for this 
Not that it matters too much, but I think 0.2 would have been better rather than having too much lumpiness at the bottom here. And again, you can subdivide with your multi-resolution as many times as your computer can handle if you want more detail. And that's in the modifiers. Try and vary the detail across your shape as well. So add different larger details to some areas, smaller details to others. And you can see there is a slight glitch there as well where it tries to load up a new texture and it does take a little bit of time. But generally speaking, this is performing very well. So this time I choose this sort of scales and you can see the brush strength is coming out a bit too strong so I have to undo that and there's that undo glitch again. And this is where I think I really ought to be saving my work. <laughs> so do make sure with this you are saving regularly because you are likely to come across crashes and glitches as you can see there. At this point I start realizing I've got my brush strength a bit too high so I change it to that 0.2 value and that gives that nice sort of more subtle effect which works really nicely for these scales or whatever they might be. Okay so I'm back up to 500% now so this is five times the speed that I'm normally going because basically I'm just adding those texture brushes going around adding some detail don't just slap these textures on randomly do think about the structure and what it's doing to your object one thing that I should have done more of is looked at more reference images of actual animals and see how their scales and um, hides actually look, whereas I was just sort of randomly going from memory. And I think it would have ended up looking a bit better if I'd used those reference images and really given it some more thought. Kind of just experimenting, looking at the new tools in Blender 2.9 and seeing how things were going. So the most important things would be the anchor brush because that's when you can click and drag and create the brush stroke and of course the multi-resolution modifier you can't do this in Dyn Topo it really doesn't work it just lags really badly because it's trying to create new topology on a really fine detail so you must remesh your object and then add a multi-resolution modifier but do look at my triangle count there it's up to 4 million so it is fairly high really and you do need a decent computer for this I would say also if you're doing this sort of thing then try the most up-to-date version of Blender in terms of some of the alpha builds as well because performance increases are being added all the time to the sculpting section. Here you can see for the horns I've got some sort of scrape brush which I found and I think this is a really nice one for those horn details. I go in and use the crease brush a little bit later on as well just to add some more detail to some areas to give it a finer look. And I actually use the Draw Sharp tool as well, not the crease brush here, but the Draw Sharp, which is very slightly different, sort of indents into the shape. It's like the Draw tool, but it's much finer. So there we go, this finished dragon's head. Let me know if you want to see a texturing video, maybe a retopology video, and how I go about doing those sort of things with slightly more complex models like this. Also, please let me know if you prefer this format, where I'm doing a time lapse and talking over the top, or you'd rather the follow along where I go a lot slower. So as usual, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.